Hi Scorpio, welcome to your October 2017 Astro Update. It's Rena here and it's night so I'm talking rather softly. Hopefully it will pick up. Uh, the mic will pick this up. So what's the month going to be like for you? Well, you're going to have planets enter your first house. And the first house is the house of self. It's your house. It's um, Scorpio. It's what you um, represent to other people. And it's really good for any kind of self-promotion. So for people who are looking for a job or a promotion or any kind of a raise, or if you're looking for love, you're putting yourself out there and you're putting your best foot forward. So when the sun goes into your first house, it's like you step back into your old skin and it becomes, and it's, it's new too, because you have a new year. So it's a combination of that familiar energy that makes up your sign, but with the added newness of the, of the new year. Um, you know, your solar return, in other words. So the sun is going to go into that first house on the 23rd of October. So for most of the month, it's actually going to be in your 12th house. And that's like cleaning out the attic, okay? That's like cleaning out the basement. All the stuff that you kind of shoved um way back where and didn't want to deal with. Now you're tying up loose ends and kind of making space for the new journey that you're going to be on when the sun crosses over into your first house. Okay. And, um, I, I should always say that these readings are also for people with Scorpio rising. And by the way, the word ascendant and rising are interchangeable. Sometimes people think that they're different things, but they're interchangeable. So obviously this is a general reading and your exact degree of sun or rising does affect what houses these things are in. The reason that we do these general readings is because even if it doesn't happen exactly at this time, there is a parade of these transits that is circling everyone's chart. So they do land in everyone's house, just not at the time when it's supposed to happen. And of course, the new moons and the full moons may miss it all together, depending on you know how your particular chart is constructed. But that's okay, because you'll, you have to have full moons and new moons in some houses. Uh, so you won't like be deprived of that. Um, if it's not now, it'll be at another, a later date. But anyway, getting back to the sun going into your sign, you're going to feel a lot more, uh, a lot stronger, I think. And I noticed this myself. And it's interesting because if you know what your natal chart is and you know what your rising sign is then um, you have to have your your exact time of birth of course and when you see your natal chart and you see what your 12th house is and you know what your solar chart 12th house is um, both of those times during the year you may notice yourself not at full capacity and I have noticed that myself. And it's interesting because if you, if you didn't know anything about astrology, you may just shrug it off and say, wow, I've been, you know, very tired lately and not put two and two together. So it helps in the sense that you know that this too shall pass and you don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm never going to feel energetic again. And also, it's kind of like the universe's way of getting you to stop being so active in the world and being a lot more introspective because the 12th house is all about introspection. So in addition to the sun being there most of the month, um, Venus 
is going, let me see. Yeah, Venus and Mars are going to form a conjunction in Virgo um, on the 5th and 6th of October. So that will be in your 11th house. I think that's very auspicious for Scorpios. And especially if you're looking for love, I think that um, because this, the 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes, Okay, so that might be something that where you meet your soulmate or, you know, something like that love at first sight type of thing through friendships, through some kind of a group association. So just keep those dates in mind because actually the fifth is the full moon in Aries, which is going to be actually hitting your sixth house of health and work. But um, that Venus and Mars will be in the 11th house in in uh, the sign of Virgo. And that's hopes and wishes. I mean, that's like kind of like for Scorpios who have been looking for the partner that really um, is is the the full package, I guess you would say. This might be that time. But then um, Venus goes into Libra on the 14th. And so that, that's when it goes into your 12th house. Okay, so you have Venus in the 12th. What does that mean? Well, the 12th house um, is... Um, the house of what is beneath the surface, um, kind of like your house, the eighth house, Scorpio's house, um, which is very secretive too. But the twelfth house is kind of like subliminal. And um, so it's almost, with with um, Scorpio's eighth house, there's, there's a conscious awareness of the psyche, you may not want to expose it to other people, but you know what is beneath the surface in your own mind. This is about the things that are deeply embedded within us that we may not have conscious awareness of. That's what the 12th house is all about, Pisces, natural house. And it can even deal with karma, past life stuff. So with Venus going in that house... Uh, some Scorpio people may be having a secret love affair. You may uh, have meet somebody at those dates that I mentioned, the 5th and the 6th, you may meet somebody and you feel like this in instant connection. And then Venus goes into that 12th house and it becomes this deja vu thing where all of a sudden the wheels start turning in your head and you start remembering them maybe from a f former incarnation or something like that. That's just one possibility. But there's something that has to do with love that is not at the conscious level, that is, that is mystical and very nebulous, you know, not very uh, distinct, clear. So just keep an eye out for that. Mercury goes into your sign on the 17th. So Mercury is going to be in that 12th house for half of the month. And um, Mercury is the way your mind works and the way it ticks, right? And your so your thoughts, what are your thoughts? In the 12th house, sometimes there can be a lot of um, vague anxieties because you're you're picking up on things that you know it is a psychic house just like your eighth house um, the water houses are psychic okay and especially the eighth and twelfth houses and you may be picking up on the collective the the twelfth house is the collective on a spiritual level um, and with what's happening now, I mean, even if you want to talk about the hurricanes, earthquake, um, people are 
apprehensive. Not everybody. Not everybody is, you know, freaking out. I'm not freaking out, but I don't live in Florida. I don't live in Mexico. So, or the Caribbean right now. So, um, it's easy for me to say, right? But the point that I'm trying to make is that you are a natural empath anyhow. So you are always like your antenna is up and you are like picking up on other people's vibes. And in the 12th house, it can be repressed fears that you're picking up. It may not even be you. So it really behooves um, Scorpio people with all this 12th house activity to be very um, meditative. Use the 12th house to your advantage because it, just by its very nature, it's bringing in so much, um, I, I would even say support for you in a sense. Um, it's You can't say that a house is just bad because it has the tendency to provoke um, deeply seated fears. It's it's not. Uh, the twelfth house can be transcendent, and you've had Libra. Um, I'm sorry. You you have you've had Jupiter in this house for the last year. So perhaps some of you in the last year have upped your game spiritually. Maybe you've crossed paths with. Um, a person or people who have helped you to become self-actualized in some way and that has prepared you for this time and you're able to be um, a lot more centered than maybe other people who are not conscious. So it's all about consciousness. Okay, so since I've brought up Jupiter, I should say that on the 10th, and I thought it was the 11th, but according to my um, ephemeris, and this is an American time zone, so just keep that in mind too, that it is on the 10th and Jupiter is turning, is going into your sign. So that is also um, a very important development in the month of October for Scorpio. So Jupiter in the first, again, being able to make good impressions on people. And with Jupiter versus like Venus or something like that, it's more of a good luck charm, I would say, overall. And just widening um, your opportunities in general. As I just stated in my video to... Libra. I received more than one comment from people um, when I posted the uh, Jupiter in Scorpio video, which you can find on my channel. Um, I released that last week. But I've had people say, who were Libra Librans, that Jupiter in their sign did not really do anything for them. And I'll say to you, Scorpio, um, that first of all, any of these predictions, these transits, I'm always a bit torn about this whole business because it can really give the wrong impression sometimes that life is set in stone. I don't believe it is, okay? So whatever happens to you is going to be the choices that you make, the direction you decide to go in, if you decide to embrace the highest version of yourself and take the high road, that will determine whether or not um, certain things happen to you. Because we know that there's cause and effect in the universe. So you can't, I don't think that most people believe that they can do whatever they want and expect um, that nothing is going to reverberate as a result of that. But it's not some kind of primitive um, punishment, um, any more than gravity is, is a form of punishment. If you hold a, a um, plate made out of china 
and drop it and it shatters into a million pieces. There's nothing um, punitive about that. It's just a law of physics. And likewise, there's spiritual laws. And the best use of astrological videos is to use them as not as crutches and um, then you can blame them when it doesn't turn out the way that the astrologer promised but to use them as guideposts and if you're feeling confused to a source of hope you know that things are going to get better in the near future. But you still have to take responsibility for your own life. And of course, this is my opinion, and you're free to think otherwise, but that's kind of where I go round and round sometimes with people because they think that this is guaranteed to happen and that they don't have to do anything. It's just going to drop in their lap. And that's what I want to clear up. I don't think that that's the way the universe works. I think you have to do your part. You know, you've heard that expression, pray and get your feet moving. And I love that because it's both, you know, it's not one or the other, not get your feet moving and don't believe in anything beyond the physical. No, but don't just pray and then sit there and pray some more and then complain that things don't happen. Okay, um, what else is happening? So there's a full moon in Aries on the 5th. Okay, now, this is your 6th house. So the 6th house is a practical house, just like your house is a water house, and it's more mystical and not um, something that, you know, not tangible in a lot of ways, although... Uh, your house has other people's money, and I guess that's tangible. But it's more about consciousness, I think, than anything else. Um, the sixth house is about your schedule every day. What you do, how you do it, what you could do better, um, what you want to change. It's your health, so it deals with um, how do you feel inside of that flesh suit. I don't like that. Your body, okay? Your temple, if you want to call it that. How do you feel inside of it? Is there something that needs to purify? The The full moon time can be a time of purifying, even if you're not trying to. You may just feel like, um, oh my goodness, I feel like a detox is coming on. And it's funny because women their menstrual cycles can be timed with the full moon. And there's your detox, you know, menstrual cycles are detoxes. So that, that it doesn't even have to fall in the sixth house, but this one ha happens to also fall in the sixth house. So people who um, are, who understand about detox and feel that it's good for them, they may decide to use that time for that, or even um, you may become aware of something that has been going awry health-wise, and so that allows you to heal a particular disorder or whatever's going on, um, but there can be something with work matters. Perhaps you find out something in your workplace for some people, there may be um, more work. I mean, even at a full moon, sometimes people think that they're endings, but they're actually also increases sometimes. So whether you're ending a, a particular place of employment or you are finding out that you have more work at this time, you might see developments with work itself. Then there's going to be a new moon in your 12th house happening on the 19th of October. And so this is falling in that area of the collective unconscious. So a new moon in this area, this is after um, Jupiter has gone into your sign. But you're looking at 
the spiritual dimension. You're looking at your relationship with the divine and you may have a new lease on your beliefs about that. Now, the ninth house is more about the philosophical framework that you have, but the twelfth house can be maybe even exper experiential, where you're having um, some kind of synchronicities because you have... Um, Venus in that house at that time, you may feel like everything is coming together, that you're understanding um, some of your former lifetimes, because maybe it's a twin flame situation. I should have said that earlier with, with uh, Venus going into the 12th house after merging with Mars in the 11th. But whatever is going on, it can be like a spiritual rebirth for you. A couple, a few days later, Mars goes into Libra, and that's the twelfth house as well. So Mars joins Venus in the twelfth, and Mars in the twelfth is really kind of um, uh, bound up because Mars is a plan of action. The twelfth house is a is a house of reflection. If that, I mean, sometimes it's even hard to reflect in the twelfth because there's so many layers and there's so much fog that it's hard to kind of make heads or tails of the impressions that come through. It's just like if you have a dream and you're trying to figure out um, what it means and it seems so random, some of the symbolism. And uh, that's the, tw the, the twelfth house is the house of dreams. So it's like an upper chakra, like the, the seventh chakra. And sometimes we get these uh, symbols and don't know how to decode them. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm one of those people that have dreams that are really silly. That, you know, they, I don't even have dreams most of the time that I remember. So if you're a typical Scorpio, you probably have like very... Uh, detailed dreams and, you know, very lucid, um, you know, vivid. And um, so Mars in this house is good for Hatha yoga and things like that, where you can actually move your body, but still have your chakras aligned or whatever you want to call it when everything is as it should be and, and not block, no blockages or things like that. So to sum things up, I would say that it's, there's something that seems very, I don't know if a turning point is too dramatic, but you know, in a way you could say that because for, um, you, I think it's pretty significant that Jupiter is entering your sign in the same month that the sun enters your sign. And then having that conjunction between Venus and Mars and having it in the 11th house, which is the luckiest house, seems to me that if you're looking for love, um, just circle those dates, the 5th and 6th. Because you never know what might happen. And I think if you have this expectation of good things happening, that it's more likely for it to occur. So I hope you enjoyed this, Scorpio. And um, I still have a special on my needle chart inter interpretations. So I have a link below for that. But uh, otherwise, I hope that you have a very magical October. Bye.